and so we're proud of it. Revelation chapter number 3. Revelation chapter number 3. It is hard to believe this is the actual ninth message, the ninth week we're already into Revelation. Time flies when you're having fun. But we got a long way to go. We're just through chapter 3 here today. Uh, we have, uh, this is the seventh letter of seven uh, to these churches that are now in modern day Turkey uh, that uh, used to be, of course, uh, there that uh, uh, Paul had something to do with some of these and other missionaries, of course, started them. And uh, now these letters have been written to these churches to start this book of Revelation. They represent spiritual conditions throughout uh, the ages. They represent uh, personal spiritual uh, situations in people's lives. Uh, They teach us how we need to grow, uh, what we need to do when we're not right with God. And all of these letters have been good. Today, the letter to the Laodicean church. Uh, And uh, this is the one that made Jesus sick. How many of y'all want to make Jesus sick? I don't think anybody here wants to make him sick. But uh, this church did. And uh, so we're going to see how we can avoid that uh, here today. Laodicea was, uh, again, in the the vicinity of Philadelphia. We uh, uh, had that letter last week. Uh, Ephesus uh, was nearby. Uh, um, Laodicea was probably the wealthiest city in that area uh, of all of these churches that have been mentioned here. They actually were known for uh, uh, a rare, expensive black wool that could be found there. And it was very expensive. And if you uh, uh, wore that, you know, you, you were rich. They were also known, which I think is very interesting, for eye salve. Eye salve uh, that was believed to cure eye problems. And uh, so uh, very interesting. And it's actually a part of the letter here uh, that that is very interesting, as we'll see here in just a a moment. Now, let's let's read it. It starts in verse 14 of Revelation chapter 3 down to the end of the chapter. Uh, And again, it's in red letters. If you have a red letter Bible, it's speaking, the Lord speaking to this church here in Laodicea. And unto the angel or the pastor of the church of the Laodiceans write, These things saith the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou weren't cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me gold, try it in the fire, that thou mayest be rich, and white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear, and anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous, therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in to him and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches." Four things here this morning we want to see about making Jesus sick that we don't want to make Him sick. And if you want to avoid it, here they are. Number one, concentrate on Jesus' character and power. Concentrate on Jesus' character and power. Our Lord introduces Himself to this church in verse number 14. He said, These things saith the Amen. He introduces Himself as the Amen. The word transliterated Amen in the Greek is the Hebrew word for truth and refers to that which is fixed, unchangeable, and trustworthy. Is it not true this morning that our Lord Jesus Christ is fixed and unchangeable and trustworthy? The phrase, the faithful and true, just uh, goes on to explain uh, even more. He's the amen, the faithful and true witness. Would you agree with me this morning that Jesus is the amen, the faithful and the true witness? That's what He is. 
We've come to worship Him today and lift Him up. He's the one who's the Amen, the faithful one, the true witness. Jesus used a word in the Gospels many times when He was teaching and preaching to the people. He would use the word verily. And normally when He would say it, He would say verily, verily. The word, uh, there's another word that He could have used uh, that goes right along with that, that describes it, and it's truly, truly. And the Lord Jesus Christ, when He says it, when He does it, whatever it is, it is trustworthy, it is true. He is the Amen, the faithful and true witness. One of the greatest things He ever said when He used the word, or the phrase, verily, verily, He said, verily, verily, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And I'll remind you, except you be born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now the next phrase, the beginning of the creation of God. Boy, that throws some people. Because we get the idea, of course, we don't believe that Jesus was created. Jesus has always been. We know that, that is the truth. But some people twist that scripture. It has nothing to do with Him being created. He is not a created being. He's always been. Uh, 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 in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. And then that's John 1, 1 and 2, verse 3 of John 1 says, uh, And all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. What it's talking about here, of course, in, in Revelation 3.14, is that He's the beginning of the creation of God. He is the origin or source of creation. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Now let me tell you something. It takes power. It takes power to put this world together. It takes power to do that. And to keep it running. We don't think about it a lot, do we? But it takes a lot of power to do that. And Jesus' power. Now, if you want to make Jesus sick, you, you don't think about His character. You don't think that He is the faithful and true and trustworthy and authentic. You don't think that He's the Amen. You don't understand that He is the power uh, behind the creation that we see here. And, and let me tell you something. You don't think about that and concentrate on that, you'll make Jesus sick. So concentrate on His character and His power. Secondly, you need to eliminate self-righteousness. You need to eliminate self-righteousness. Now Jesus says in verse number 15, He says, I know thy works. And in every other letter, Jesus has written some words of praise for the church. For all of these other churches, the church at Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia... He has wrote some, some words of commendation for them. Uh, he has wrote words of condemnation for all of them except two. But here's a different story. Do you know the church at Laodicea, Jesus says nothing of commendation to them. No words of praise whatsoever. Now, how would you like to be in a church where the Lord would come and check out the church and there would be no words of praise for it? But that's exactly what happened. Uh, he says, uh, uh, instead of giving him words of praise there in verse uh, 15, he says, you're, either, you're neither cold nor hot. And he says, I wish that you were cold or hot. Now, that also has, uh, 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 it's, it's a somewhat of a play on words uh, here because the city of Laodicea, uh, always had water problems. Had water problems. There was a, uh, a tri-city community there that included Colossae, which was about 10 miles east of there, and Hierapolis, which was 6 miles north. Uh, 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 Hierapolis is like Hot Springs, Arkansas. And there's other towns that are known for this, but there are towns that are known for their hot springs, uh, their hot mineral springs. And uh, that was what Hierapolis was known for. And, and there was an aqueduct that was built to bring some of that hot water toward Laodicea. But by the time it got to Laodicea, six miles away, it was not as hot as it was. It had become lukewarm. And, then the, uh, and so they could not drink that, and it had too many minerals. So they got their uh, drinking water from Colossae, which had good cold drinking water. But by the time it got Laodicea, what was it? It was lukewarm. It was lukewarm. Have you ever just wanted some good cold water? 
and you got lukewarm water. Uh, it's not good. I mean, it, you know, it's, it's wet, but it's not good. Well, that's exactly what the Lord says here. He, he, he wishes they were either hot or cold, but because they're lukewarm, He says, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Now, the context uh, uh, of the word lukewarm seems to suggest the people in the church have some degree of interest in the, cha- in the things of God, but they're, they're just lukewarm. They're, 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 they're not on fire for the Lord. And let me tell you something. It's, it's hard to deal with a lukewarm person. It really is. It's hard, to, it's hard to deal. The Lord even says, I don't even want to deal with you. I just want to spew you out of my mouth. I just want to throw you up. Uh, uh, I just want to vomit, in essence, uh, is basically what he's talking about here. Now, sometimes it is easier to reach somebody who is either hot or either cold instead of somebody who is lukewarm. Lukewarm people just kind of sit there. And the preaching is going on, and the Lord's trying to deal with people, and okay, well, it's good stuff, but you know, it's all right. Listen, we either need to get fired up, either get either get cold or get hot. That's what the Lord Jesus Christ said. I mean, if you want to make Jesus sick, get stuck on your own self righteousness. Get stuck on your own self righteousness. They were nauseating. See, now he he gives a description of them. He says in verse number 17, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. They thought they were rich. This was a very rich town, a very rich church. They all had plenty. And they thought that since they were rich, they did not need anything. They didn't even need the Lord. You know, we we live in a world where where most people have have plenty. uh, Where most people have, have more than enough in essence. It used to be we had to pray the prayer, uh, give us this day our daily bread. We don't really have to pray that prayer anymore, do we? You know why we don't? Because the Lord has, has blessed us with so much that you got bread for today, and guess what? Most of you got bread for tomorrow already. And bread for the next day. Now we ought to be saying hallelujah, thank the Lord. That we don't have to live from day to day. But then what happens is we forget even were the bread that we have today and the bread that we have tomorrow and the bread that we already have for the next day has come from. It's come from the Lord. And let me tell you something. Then we kind of get, well, you know, maybe it's because of me. Maybe it's because of, uh, you know, I've worked hard and I've done this and I've, I've took, taken care of my money and all of those kind of things. Let me tell you something. You better be careful of your own self-righteousness. You better constantly be thanking the Lord for how good He is to you. Uh, Thank the Lord that you got bread for today. Thank the Lord that you already got bread for tomorrow and bread for the next day. Uh, uh, We we got out yesterday and Dana said, we need some bread. I said, okay, let's go buy some bread. So we went and bought some bread. And we had some bread last night. And guess what? We got some bread for tomorrow. Already already lined up. And already the next day. And, and, and what should we do? Should we say, well, you know, we got it made. No, we should say, thank you, Lord, for that bread. Listen, don't, don't get cold on yourself and on your self-righteousness. Don't be saying, well, I'm rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing. Which is what a lot of people in this world say. I don't need anything, even God. Even God. There's a lot of people out today. They don't need God. They're out doing their thing today. They don't need God. They're going to find out one day they wish they had found Him. Uh, Listen, a lot of people don't even think, again, that they need uh, the righteousness of Christ. And how does He describe them? Look at verse 17. He says, Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing, knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked, they might even wear some of that expensive clothing, that black wool I was talking about earlier. But they're naked and poor in God's sight. I, I'd rather be poor in man's sight and rich in God's sight than rich in man's sight and poor in God's sight. He said uh, they're, they're even blind to their spiritual poverty. It's time that you that you even use some of that eye salve that we're known for. Listen... 
Be thankful to the Lord. And don't get to thinking that it's of your own doings and of your own self. You ever heard anybody say, well, I'm a self-made man. Listen, who gives you the air to breathe every day? Who gave you the strength to even get up out of bed this morning? Who gives you the ability to even walk? Let me tell you something. It's God Almighty. And you know, it's, it's like the uh, story the, the man told of the, of the rich fool. that uh, He said, well, you know, we're just going to build. I'm going to tear down these barns and build more. You know, I'm just going to eat, drink, and be merry. This night, that fool, this, this night, your soul is going to be required of you. Eliminate self-righteousness or you're going to make Jesus sick. Don't forget where your blessings come from. Thirdly, you need to evaluate Jesus' offer. You need to evaluate Jesus' offer. Verse number 18. He says, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. And white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed. And that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that thou mayest see. As many as I love, I rebuke and chase and be zealous, therefore, and repent. He says you need to buy the gold that's tried in the fire that you may be rich. Now that's not talking about buying salvation. You cannot buy your salvation. You cannot buy it. Uh, There's a lot of people who think they can. Uh, uh, um, You know, there's a lot of rich people in our world today that that do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. Now I don't know their heart for sure. But uh, you can can, uh, uh, sense from the way they speak and the way they run their businesses and the way way everything is set up, you can can sense from uh, their, quote, testimony that their testimony is not of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can sense it. Now, how do do you think some of those guys who are multi-billionaires, zillionaires, do you think they can walk into heaven one day and stand before God and pull their wallet out and say, uh, listen, I've got a billion dollars right here. Can I get in? Is that going to do it? It's not going to do it. You cannot buy your salvation. That's not what it's talking about here. Uh, what, it's, what it's talking about, of course, is, is refined by testing. And, 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 and a lot of people have fool's gold. But i got news for you. i got the real gold. i got what the Lord Jesus Christ has given me. And listen, I'm going to be rich, and I am rich. And, and, I got, and I'm going to wear white raiment one day, and, and I'm not going to be naked standing before the Lord one day. Aren't you glad of that? Listen, uh, um, I had a, a buddy in, in high school that used to sing, and he used to sing a song entitled, I, I'm a Poor Rich Man. I'm a Poor Rich Man. And he was poor, humanly speaking, but rich in the Lord. Aren't you glad of that? And that's exactly my testimony. I'm a poor, rich guy here this morning. And and matter of fact, you know what a, a good way of, of testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ? Uh, uh, tell people, you know what? I'm just some poor, rich guy. They'll say, do what? Yeah, I'm, I may be poor, humanly speaking, but I am rich, spiritually speaking. I have, I, have, I have the gold of the Lord Jesus Christ. I have the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ actually just running through my veins even. The Lord tells them, He says, listen, you need to get some of that eye salve that you got in that, in that city and you need to put it on your eyes so you can see. This uh, past Thursday, I had to have this little thing cut off my eyelid. And uh, it, was, uh, it was exciting, uh, uh, to say the least. Uh, 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 I had to uh, go to eye doctor, and, and uh, they, uh, they gave me a Valium, 20 milligrams of Valium, uh, so I would just kind of settle down. Well, I settled down, all right. <laughs> I was messing with Dana, though. They, they, gave it, they took me back and took my blood pressure and then uh, gave me the Valium and a Tylenol with codeine to kind of cut the edge off a little bit. And I was awake for this whole thing. But anyhow, uh, uh, and then they brought me back out into the waiting room so that I would... Um, you know, kind of let that work a little bit. And so I'm just kind of like this out there, you know. Dana's sitting over here beside me, and I, I start going, 2 plus 2 equals 3, and 2 plus 2 equals 6, and Stephanie, are you over there? And, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. So just, just messing with her a little bit, you know, to see if she was uh, paying attention. Because she, she was waiting for me to start saying crazy stuff. So I said, well, I'll give her the chance to say it. I, I'll say it for her. 
But anyhow, uh, I finally went back in there, and they laid me down in the chair. Boy, they uh, duded me up. You know, they put a turban on my head. I had a big old turban thing on my head. I had a thing across here. And uh, I'm laying there, and I, I, my eyes are closed. You know, I'm not watching any of this stuff. I didn't want to see this. And, and she said, open your eyes. i got to put some drops in your eyes to deaden your eyes. I said, okay. So we did that. And then the doctor was there, and she said, uh, okay, now, here comes the not-so-fun part. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to give you three shots right here in the eyelid. And so she gave me three shots right there in the eyelid. I, I felt a little bit of that, you know. But it wasn't too bad. It wasn't too bad. And I hope I'm not grossing you out too much. And then she started working on me. I didn't feel anything after that except a little water running across, you know, my face to clean, clean myself up. And then uh, 15 minutes later, I was done. She said, about two weeks, the, the swelling and bruising will go be away, and you'll be good as, good as new. I said, well, praise the Lord. So, uh, but they, and then they gave me some salve, though. They said, you need to take some salve. And so I have to put this stuff in my eyes uh, twice a day. And let me tell you something. It's, it's, it's true salve. What it does is you cannot see out of this eye when, when it goes in there. And so I told Dana this uh, yesterday, I said, I'm not going to be able to use that stuff on Sunday morning. I might have to wait till I get home Sunday afternoon because I won't even be able to see the Bible uh, to preach from. Because it, it just blank, it blanks his whole eye out right here. And so i got to do that for a couple of weeks. But I say, uh, it's good. Well, the Lord tells these people, he says, listen, you got to get some eye salve. So what? So you can see your spiritual condition. You know what the world's spiritual condition is? Their minds have been blinded by the God of this world. And they need some eye salve so that they can see uh, the offer that Jesus Christ has given to them. What is the offer? He says, I stand at the door and knock. I'm knocking at the door of your heart. And I'm ready to come in. I'm ready to come in. Listen, the Lord Jesus Christ is right there standing at the door of your heart. Now, if you're not saved, He's standing there knocking, in so, knocking so He can come in. But sometimes we, uh, those of us who are saved, you know what we've, what we've done? No, you can't lose your salvation. And so don't take me wrong, but a lot of times it's almost like the Lord's got to come knock at our door sometimes to get our attention. Because we about forgot about Him. Now I know I'm preaching to the choir here this morning. I'm preaching to the choir. But don't forget the Lord. Evaluate Jesus' offer or you're going to make Him sick. Blindness in the Bible. Blindness in the Bible represents being blind to spiritual truth in one's spiritual condition. And it's very sad that people cannot even see their spiritual condition. They need that I say. They need to evaluate Jesus' offer or they're going to make Him sick. And then lastly here this morning, you need to participate in Jesus' invitation. You need to participate in Jesus' invitation. Again, the invitation and the offer is that He's standing at the door and knocking. Verse 20. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and he with me. To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his throne. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Now let me ask you this question. Do you know for sure that if you were to die today that you would go to heaven? Do you know that for sure? It's good every now and then to just examine yourself and examine, uh, the Bible even says, to examine ourselves to see whether we are in the, in the faith or not. Uh, I'm convinced, and, and, I, and I, I, I just, I, I pray, and I hope it's not the case, but I'm telling you, uh, just because you're a member of Hope Baptist Church don't mean you're going to heaven, by the way. And I, I would hate for somebody to, to think just because they're a member of Hope Baptist Church they're on the way to heaven. That's not the case. That's not the case. Uh, just because you're a member of any church doesn't mean that. This invitation is given to those who do not know Christ. 
Uh, and, he, and he says, I will come in and will sup with him and he with me. October the 1st, 1972. The Lord Jesus Christ was knocking on my heart. That was the day I let him in. What was the day that you let him in? You remember that day? You remember that day that you let him in? You remember that day you might have been sitting in a service like this and the preacher was preaching. And, and he was knocking on your door and you let him in. It might have been in your home. It might have been in a Sunday school class. It could have been uh, 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 as you're driving down the road. It could have been in a revival service. Whatever it was. Do you remember that time he was knocking on your door and you, and you let him in? You let him in. Aren't you glad of that this morning? Aren't you glad of his kindness toward us? Well, I think we need to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith or we're going to make Jesus sick. He's standing there knocking. He says, To him that overcometh will I grant to sit with me in my throne, even as I also overcame and am set down with my Father. Now, uh, this is not a literal huge throne. I mean, it's not going to be a throne where everybody's going to be sitting. And we're going to sit with Christ, but it means we're going to share in Christ's reign. And one day, all of us who know the Lord Jesus Christ, we're going to share in the reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to reign with Him. I look forward to that day when it's going to happen. Are you ready for it? You know, the Lord may come today. We say it, say it every Sunday. He may come today. Well, let me tell you something. Look at chapter 4 and verse 1 if you still have your Bible over. After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. The first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. That's what we're going to preach about next week. But there is coming that time where he's going to say, Come up hither, come up hither, and we'll be with him forever. Is that going to include you? It only includes those who know Him as Savior. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed.